Right, so this is what we're making, this uh, canopy which is for selling coffee out the back of. So this is going to be a little, little coffee van and this is the basic layout. People will order the coffee from the back here, get made at the side. Um, so this is going to be a, a, an aluminium box section framework and then skinned in 2mm aluminium sheet. Door on the side, door on the back, little access door on the other side here which will just access this compartment. So then when you've got the sides folded up, they'll obviously secure the doors in as well. The doors aren't going to come all the way down to here, they're going to come just below the height of the sides so that the sides will lock them in but they're a little bit shorter so you've got less door being blown around in the wind.
So this is the HTP Revolution. This thing's come over from America. Unfortunately, this isn't something that's going to be available to uh, us over here in the UK, which is a real shame because there's currently nothing that really compares or, or has all the features that this has. This machine will do MIG, all the stuff you would expect a modern Synergic MIG to do. It also does pulsed MIG, which if you have watched my channel for a long time, you'll know that that's something that I like to use quite a lot. It does double pulsed MIG and it does AC, DC TIG and normal TIG. Um, you've got aluminium specific settings for all the pulsed MIG as well. And you've also got this um, MIG 4TS feature and that's what's made doing the aluminium MIG a real pleasure. You've also got a aluminium specific torch which is a bit shorter um, and you've got this amperage adjuster so you can adjust on the fly. I've done a bit of alley MIG with a few different machines and it's always been temperamental and I would usually end up just going back to TIG welding stuff uh, whereas I've done this whole project with the Ali MIG and it's I would say it's probably sped the job up massively. So you can see I'm set at aluminium 5356 wire. I've got my uh, material thickness which I can adjust here. I can also adjust that with my uh, torch button on the side here. 100% argon, I'm running 40 CFH, so you do get through quite a bit of gas uh, and pulsed as well. So I've got the option to do just normal MIG, pulse MIG, double pulsed MIG. For now, we're just gonna go pulse MIG. So this is the clever bit, and this is like a four touch setup. So this represents the different stages of when I've got the trigger held in, let go of, pulled back in again, and then let go of. This is showing the pre-gas, gonna do a quick burst of gas before it actually fires the arc. Then as I'm holding the trigger down the first time, I'm gonna be at 140% of my welding current that I've set. This is important for Ali, I'll talk about in a minute, in a minute why. When I let go of the trigger, it's gonna down slope here. I could set it so it ramps down slowly or it just completely drops straight down. So I've got mine set to 0.1 second. It will drop down to this, this second line here is my welding current of whatever I've set the machine to. So that would be effectively 100%. Then it's gonna drop down to 70%. And again, I'll talk about why you, you need it to do that in a second. And then a one second uh, post flow of gas afterwards. So what this is representing is, I'm gonna pull the trigger, I'm gonna be at 140%. I'm gonna let go of the trigger, I'll be at 100%. I'm gonna pull the trigger again, it'll drop down to 70%. I'm gonna let go and it'll finish my weld. So it's four steps uh, within one weld and that'll give you three different amperage settings across that one weld. Right, so the reason you need those, those multiple stages of, uh, of uh, amperage is because when you weld aluminium, if you've done it with a foot pedal, you'll know you need a lot of amps initially to get it going. It then heat soaks very quickly and you end up backing off. So if, I was, if you were welding this with a foot pedal, TIG welding it, you'd be heavy on the pedal here, then you'd back off and you'd settle into your welding current, whatever that might be for this. Then what happens is you'll be welding along here. The heat soak is following the front of the puddle. By the time you get to the end of this piece, there's nowhere for the heat to keep going and it's spreading across this aluminium so fast that unless you back right off at the end of this, you will just melt the end of it away. So you would start high on the pedal, you'd back off, you'd settle into your, your current, and then at the end you'd back right off again. And uh, that's basically the process that the, the MIG machine is doing all by itself just through the operation of the trigger. It's doing all that for you. So I'm gonna um, 
run a few wells, you should you should hear this cycling. You should hear the pitch change as I change cycle through the trigger operation. The only thing is, when you want to tack something, you've got to either quickly cycle through the on-off, on-off, or turn it back to normal trigger mode. I just quickly will press it twice and then let go to basically get a tap. Little bit hot, and as you can see, I was a little bit slow pulling the trigger at the end, almost blew through there, but just managed to catch it. Did the same on this one. I did a bit of a weave on this one to try and replicate a TIG weld. So, with this one, you should not only hear the change in pitch from the different amperage settings but you should hear the change in pitch between the high and low of the pulse. So it's basically pulsing the uh, current up and down as I go. So that's the double pulse, you can see where it's the machines put those ripples in there. I'm just doing like a steady push motion across there and that's just the cycling of the uh, high and low amperage setting and you can obviously adjust that. And you can go deep into those settings to um, change the frequency of the pulse and all sorts of stuff but th that's just the basic as the machine sort of comes setting for that. So my preferred method is a bit of a weave, uh, pushing the torch along forwards. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty decent. So I'm a fan of the pulsed alley MIG settings on this machine. Uh, pulsed, if you don't know what pulsed is, in comparison to the MIG that most people would know, which is a short circuit MIG, which when you're welding steel will make that crackling sound that people will say, it sounds like frying bacon. That's basically um, the sound of the wire shorting against the material that you're welding. With pulse, it's not doing that. The wire is molten before it hits the material so it's never shorting against the uh, the actual material it's it's effectively like spraying the molten wire into into the weld puddle whilst you know melting everything else at the same time so it's a different it's a different uh, process altogether I like using the pulse but for some stuff it's not ideal because the angle of the torch is very what's the word it's like very sensitive to torch angle so you want to always be pushing and you need to keep a very consistent distance torch to it and you can't you can't angle it too much one way or the other whereas with short circuit mig you could you could have the torch like that you know you can be pushing pulling you know it's very forgiving of uh torch angle and position whereas this 
it's not forgiving at all. So as soon as your torch position goes out of whack, your weld will go out of whack. So all of this material is um, straight off the floor. I haven't cleaned anything. I haven't wire brushed anything. It's just grubby, dirty alley. The fact that you can just sort of cut it and weld it straight together with no prep and um, get a half decent result. It just just makes working with Ali that bit quicker and easier because uh, when you're TIG welding, obviously there's a lot of prep that goes into getting a good result. But obviously the the biggest difference is this doesn't look doesn't look as nice, but there's so many applications where this would be preferable for me. So if you're interested in uh, learning a bit more about this machine, I'll put some links in the description and uh, I'll also put a link to Peter Zilla's YouTube channel. He has had a, uh, a huge part in the design process of this machine. So um, yeah, so far so good. That's gonna be it for this one. Cheers for watching, see you on the next one.